Good evening, everyone. So glad to see all of you. Praise God, Brother Humphrey. Good to see you so much in the house of God. Let's all stand and let's uh, sing this good song, To God Be the Glory. I'm so thankful that we can give God the glory in all circumstances and in all times and trials, tribulations, and even in the good times. We get to give God the glory. Come on, Brother Don, you lead us in this good song. And I'm sure they'll have the words up for you here in just a moment. But you just sing to the housetop. We'll have a wonderful time tonight. Come on, Brother Don. Amen. Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. For sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he has done oh perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done. Great things he has taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let his people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Let's do that chorus one more time. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise to the good Lord above. Amen. So glad to see each and every one of you here. Thank you for about those that are joining us by way of the internet. I'm going to ask Brother Joe Kramer, if he will, come on ahead and he'll open us up in a word of prayer this evening. So glad that we can also go to the throne of grace in our time of need. There's so many that have so many things that are going on. There's sickness that's going around. There's those that are bereaved, and we need to pray for those. But you remember those families that are going through these difficult times. But pray that God will continue to move in the services here at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. So thankful that we felt the sweet breeze of the Holy Spirit of God come through, not once, but twice, but several times uh, this past Sunday, and we're so glad to be able to be a part of that. Brother Joe, you come on ahead, you open us up in a word of prayer, and we'll get Brother Don to lead us in another song. Thank you, Brother Joe. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful to be here tonight. And Heavenly Father, we're thankful to have a church that we can come to on Wednesday night. Heavenly Father, to worship you. And dear God, I pray that you would be with those that are sick, God, and those that are bereaved. God, I pray that you would touch this congregation. Dear Lord, thank you for the services that we had on Sunday. 
And dear Lord, thank you for meeting with us once again. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would touch lives here tonight. Thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's remain standing if you don't mind. I think everybody sings a bit better as they stand. And uh, I know you're tired from working all day, but give God the praise through song tonight. Page number 109, if you will. Send the light, the gospel light. There's a call comes ringing or the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today, send the light, send the light. And the golden offering at the cross we lay, send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore on the last. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Amen. You go ahead, and they're going to play through one more time. You thought you were going to say sit down. They're going to play through a verse in the chorus. You wave at somebody, shake somebody's hand, give them a fist bump, do something like that. Mark, get set, go. <laughs> as you go back to your seats in the light the blessed gospel light let it shine forever more yes amen you go ahead be seated thank you so much make a few announcements real quickly thank you so much for joining us here uh, this evening and if you are uh, here first time we thank you for being our special guest and then we do have a few things to just make sure that we let you know what's going on around here at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle this morning we finished up a study through we went through in our morning Bible study at 1030 on Wednesday mornings we've gone through a little Bible study through the book of Philippians and uh, it didn't take us but three years, but praise God we got it done. No, I'm joking. It didn't take us that long, but we had a good time. So if you're able and you'd like to come out and be a part of that, just come over at 1030. We'll have a good time in that little Bible study time. Not nearly as long uh, winded in the morning as I am at night. Oh, they don't believe that either. So praise God. <laughs> So, but to also we have the men's prayer time every Sunday morning at 1045. So if you can avail yourself to that, make sure that you go over to the Oasis and uh, spend some time praying for our church, praying for our pastor, praying for each and every one of the members here that are in our church that God would continue to have his will and his way. Then also January the 24th, towards the end of this month, we do have our lasting love. It's going to be on Tuesday the 24th at 7 p.m over there in the Fellowship Hall or Oasis Center as well. Uh, Brother Joe Kramer, Miss Stephanie Kramer are doing an absolutely wonderful job with that, and we're so thankful. 
that they have taken that on. And uh, if you have an opportunity, just come on out and be a part of that. It'll bless your heart. And we get some gain some wisdom from that as well. And then, of course, this is January Jubilee here at Harvest. And we had a great time this past Sunday. But wasn't the Blythe family just an absolute blessing to all of us? I'm telling you, I'm thankful for God and people that uh, not only know how to sing, but they know who they're singing about. And they love to worship Him, just like we love to worship Him. And it is absolutely wonderful to be able to see things like that taking place. But this Sunday is going to be no different, so make sure you come out Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we're going to have Dr. Smith is going to be with us, uh, Dr. Shelton Smith from the Sword of the Lord. He's going to have Sword Sunday this Sunday uh, morning, so we'll have a good time with that. And then this e that evening on the 15th, we'll have the Inspirations, not uh, the original Inspirations, but the young guys that are coming along, and uh, they are an absolute blessing. I'll be honest with you, if you close your eyes, they sound just the same. So it's absolutely amazing how they do that, but I know that they will be a blessing to you as well. Then towards the end of the month, we're going to have Dr. John Hamblin. He's going to be with us uh, the, towards the end of the month. So make sure that you come yourself and make sure that you come to be a part of that. We do have a few cards here, uh, one during the time of bereavement, but uh, to the church family that they have, the Smiths, the McFalls, the Gilpins, and Nalls, they uh, gave us card of appreciation. Uh, and we're continuing to pray for y'all's family and we're so thankful that you're part of our family as well and uh, so thankful that God uh, can be with you during this time of bereavement as well then of course we do have one as well that Brother Joe and the church family from the uh, Mark and Susan Beam and Charles Hanson family and Brother Mark's uh, sister went home to be with the Lord and uh, we're so thankful that uh, we know where they're at praise God and that we can get to them and uh, we'll have a good time when we're able to go and pee apart uh, at, once again at the house of God in the in heaven, praise God, all together. But we'll go ahead, before we get into preaching time, uh, I did ask that we go ahead and get Sister Cindy's going to sing a song for us tonight. And uh, she has absolutely been a blessing to us in singing these songs over here on Wednesday evenings for us. And uh, tonight, I guarantee you, will be no different. So you pray for her and get your Bible, get ready. We're going to get into Acts chapter number 10 uh, when she gets done with this song. So you pray for her. Come on, Miss Cindy, and you sing for her. Show me the way 
I thought you were a friend of mine. Help me do all that I can do. I don't want to leave them behind. Save my family. Save my friends. It's a lost and dying world we're living in. It can't be much longer till you're coming. Save my family. Save my friends. Save Save my friends. It's a lost and dying world we're living in. It can't be much longer till you're coming. Save my family. Save my friends. Save Cindy, that is an absolutely wonderful song. I'm so glad that she was able to sing that. It just seems to kind of go right along with what we're going to. Acts chapter number 10 this evening. In the book of Acts chapter number 10, Cornelius and Peter meet. I'll be honest with you, it's good to be able to be in with the people of God. I'm thankful to be able to see each and every one of you, be able to be a part of this service. And I praise and worship the only one that is worthy of to be praised and worshipped. And uh, we're able to gather here every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday morning, Sunday, Wednesday night as well to be able to do that. Sunday school as well at 10 o'clock. And, and this place has been set aside as a special place to worship God. And I'm so thankful that we have this place. I'll be honest with you, to get to, to worship Jesus is what it's all about. Uh, to be able to call him wonderful counselor the mighty God praise God hallelujah the prince of peace he's the one that is worthy of our worship and what a precious friend that we really truly have uh, I'll be honest with you we had such a time last week that uh, we got on the rooftop of that hadn't let that paralytic man come down through the roof and to be able to see Jesus Christ and get that out of the way that I just started keeping on studying what the word of God says about those places where people have rooftop renovations in their life and I, and I just go on a little bit and to be honest with you I, I pray that God will just continue to open the door because there's a lot of places and a lot of times where God touched people sitting on the rooftop now we don't understand that right now because the rooftops that we have are shingled and 12-12 pitch right uh, but the roofs that they had back in those days were those flat roofs and they were actually designed to be able to take a place uh, to recline, to be able to spend time. Many people spent time uh, going there and to uh, praise God and to pray to God and spend that time and God met people there in those places. And God had to make some changes in a lot of people's lives and it seemed, Brother Jose, that some of them, many of them took place right there on a rooftop. Last week, those four men, four friends, brought that man and set him and tore the roof off and uh, renovated that person's house. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if the person's house, they really liked the new skylight that they had installed. I don't know. I don't know that if Jesus just walked out and waved his hand and repaired it right before he got out. It is possible he could have done that. But I can say that uh, these people that met Jesus Christ in these places in these times is absolutely wonderful. In our text, we find another rooftop renovation. Turn with me to Acts chapter number 10. If you look with me in verse number 9, is where I want to begin reading real quickly and read through just a few verses here. And really, truly, we're going to go through the entire chapter, just hit a few places and see what God really did in those, at this rooftop with Peter. In verse number 9, it says, And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up about upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. 
And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while he, they made ready, he fell asleep into, or fell into a, a trance. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, and it was, uh, had been a great sheet knit of the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein all manner of footed, four-footed beasts, and of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Boy, prideful Peter comes along. Oh, not me, God. I wouldn't dare do anything like that. Oh, my, we'll keep moving on. And the voice spake unto him again a second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again unto heaven. And while Peter doubted in himself... What this vision, might, uh, which this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, lodged there. Look at this. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for, Lord, your word, God, to be able to look at this word, to be able to see, God, the amazing things that you have put in for us, a map, a road map for each and every one of us to be able to see, to be able to spend time in, to enjoy, God, as you've given us the word that we've been given here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just help us, God, tonight, make much of your word, make much of your name. Lord, we're not here to make any name for ourselves, but God, we are here just to uplift the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to be able to see the Holy Spirit of God move in a great and mighty way. Lord, I pray you just bless the reading of your word. Bless the preaching, God, tonight. God, use me, God, that I might be able to preach, God, as you'd have me to preach. Guard my mouth and mine, and it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen and amen. When I begin to look through this, to be honest with you, I... I love this scripture because it absolutely sends shockwaves through all of the church age. Because up until now, the, the people that had been being preached to were mainly Jewish people. Now I understand chapter number 8, there was a, the Ethiopian that was preached to and Philip was able to give the gospel and was baptized and continued on. But as a, a whole, most everything that was being preached at this time was to the people that were of Jewish descent, the people of the house of Israel. And this shockwave went through the early church. Why? Because God opened a new door. And thank God he opened that door for you and for me. Yeah. Boys, I look around, I thank God that we, a bunch of Gentiles, have been brought in. I love how Jesus Christ put it in John 15 where he says that he grafted us in to be able to thank God that we're brought in to a new place, to a wonderful place. And, and this particular renovation that, that Apostle Paul sees that takes place, that they were there with him and those that were with him. And up to this point, the gospel is particularly to those people of Jewish. But in Romans, we begin to see what Paul is talking about when here begins to open up. Romans chapter number 1, verse number 16 simply says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. Now, I love that word. Now, during this time, in this particular time, we have folks that are called Calvinists that say that no, mostly that not all the gospel is for all the people. And I must say that that is an error in your doctrine. To be honest with you, all means all. And all is just that, that every person that believeth, for whosoever believeth, that is the one that can be saved. And I'm so thankful for that. But at the end of that verse, Brother James, he says this, Paul says this, to the Jew first, and then to the Greek. As a matter of fact, and to the Gentiles as well, in chapter number 2 in the book of Romans, verse number 9 and verse number 10 in the book of Romans, he uses that same phrase, to the Jew first, and then to the Gentiles. And thank God that this door is the door that's being opened at that time. As a matter of fact, we, we look at this and we're able to see that thank God that we are able to come into the house of God and worship Him freely because 
this door right here that Peter is walking about to walk through that we know that that is because of that at Acts chapter number 8 the Philip goes to the Ethiopian and, and he believes and in Acts chapter number 9 we see the conversion of Saul which then becomes Paul but here in chapter number 10 the whole group of Gentiles that heard the gospel believed the gospel and was baptized into the family of God I am glad to be a part of the family of God. I love that old song that we get to sing. I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. And it's because of this place right here that each and every one of us that sit here under the sound of my voice and by watching way of the internet that we can say that I am part of the family of God because God opened a door for me. Here we have it. You begin to look through this narrative in chapter number 10, and it's rather lengthy. You have about 48 verses that are here, and it can be divided up into about six different ways. If you go through that, the very first thing in the first eight verses, you see the introduction of Cornelius. And the Bible has a lot of positive things and wonderful things and great things to say about Cornelius. As a matter of fact, the Bible actually says that he was a devout man. He was a religious man. It's good to be religious. But that doesn't get you saved. A man of philanthropy. He was one that was giving of alms. He gave to the people of Israel. As a matter of fact, it even goes on to say that he had a good reputation with the people of Israel. Now, it's wonderful. I'm not going to say to be a devout man is a wonderful thing. To be a religious person that you're trying to practice what God has given to us, that's a wonderful thing. To be a man that is able to give alms and give to other people, that's a wonderful thing. To be able to have a great uh, a testimony and a reputation among the people, that's great. To fear and to believe that there is one God, that is a great thing. But John chapter number 3, verse number 3 still says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that verse is still in the Bible today. Cornelius is proof. I believe with all of my heart, Brother Jerry, that Cornelius is proof that if man takes one step to God, God will take one big giant leap to him. <laughs> and I'm so glad that when I took one step to him and he was drawing me to him, I was able to take that step and he came to me. Boy, he came and gave me eternal life and gave, God gave that vision to him to be able to see a pathway to life to Cornelius and, and, and what I love is that there's no hesitation when you begin to look at Cornelius Cornelius has no hesitation he has the vision one day and the very next day he says hey guys I've got something that I want to share with you and I need you to go this way and do this what I love even greater is that those men brother Humphrey were not ones that were sitting by saying well I don't really feel like I should have to do that How many of you know people that say, well, I shouldn't have to do that? That's not, this is the one that I love. When I own my own business, I, I, I love this one. That's not in my job description. Bless God, that's when I'd say, give me your job description, and I'm fixing to pin it in, glory to God. But we all know people that were like that, to be able to do that and didn't want to do anything. But those men said, hey, if that's what we need to know to be able to have eternal life, to be able to know who Jesus Christ is on a personal relationship, then I am willing to go. The introduction of Cornelius in the first eight verses, wonderful. But then you have the instruction of Peter, which we actually just read just a few moments ago. We look at the instruction. While God was working with Cornelius, God had to work on Peter. See, this is the part that a lot of us don't like. Sometimes God has to change our way of thinking. Sometimes God has to rearrange everything that we thought was right. Sometimes God has to rearrange the thought process that we've been taught from a little lad. That's exactly what Peter had been taught. To be honest with you, Gentiles were dogs. To be honest with you, they were nothing. They were uh, not worthy to be anything. As a matter of fact, the Talmud actually says that uh, uh, there's a prayer that's in the Talmud that many people, and I'm sure that even the Apostle Paul quoted before he got saved, was there's three things. Thank God that I am not a Gentile. Wow. He also said, thank God that I am not a slave. And for you ladies, they also said, thank God that I'm not a woman. Oh, well. Well, this is terrible to be able to, to have that thought process. But then when Jesus Christ begins to reveal to Paul and go forth and to be able to say, hey, there's no Jew and there's no Greek, 
There's no male, there's no female, there's no difference between any of us. There's no difference whatsoever. We are all equal when it comes to the cross. When it comes to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, it's absolutely equal. So the instruction that he begins to give him, God has to take care of some of the pride of Peter. Oh, it's difficult to take care of some prideful ways. By the way, that's one of the seven things that Jesus or God uh, lists in the book of Proverbs that are an abomination to him. Pride. Then God met Peter on a rooftop and began to make sure that he renovated his thinking. Peter went to the rooftop to meet God and thank God God met him. Boy, there's places, there's times where we can go and there's a little spot that we can go to and spend time with God. And, and I want to encourage you, if you do not have that place to spend time with God, make sure that in 2023 that you find you a spot, whether it's in the garage or whether it's in a closet somewhere, whether it's in the basement or to, uh, wherever it needs to be, if it needs to be under a tree in the backyard, wherever it needs to be, find you a spot where you can clear off and spend some time with God. And that's what Peter began to do. That's what Peter was wanting to do. And when God met him there, he began to instruct him in such a way. To be honest with you, there's been times in my life, Brother Ray, where God has met me in my little spot. I'm so thankful that God has cleared off a little place for me and, and I've been able to do it. There's been times where I've met him driving down the road. Now, I'll be honest with you, that's kind of dangerous sometimes. But when God has a hold of the wheel, then I don't really have a whole lot to worry about. But there's been times where I've met him and spent time with him. And I'll and I, glory to God, even when you, see, you feel that old song, Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. That is a wonderful way, a wonderful place and a wonderful spot to be able to do that. But God opens the portals of heaven to Peter and, gets, and Peter gets a whole lot more that he bargained for. Peter says, God, I just want to talk with you for a little bit. And God said, Peter, I'm glad you're here. Got something that we need to talk about. As a matter of fact, as we're speaking right now, there's three people that are on the way. But by the way, I need you to do this. Look at this sheet, and I want to bring it down. And, and you go ahead. Peter, rise, kill, eat. And I, it's, it's comical how Peter responds. Oh, not me, Lord. Not me, not, not, this, not this good Christian guy. Not this one that I, I would never. Can you believe that they do this, this, and this? That would never be me. It's getting awfully quiet in here. Boy, we, we, we have these places, we have these times, we have these things, but then the words of the Holy Spirit of God begin to ring in Peter's ear. Because in Acts chapter number 2, Peter was the one that stood up and said, Hey, I'm going to preach the word of God. And as a matter of fact, in verse number 16 in, Peter, in, in Acts chapter number 2, he says this, But this is the which is spoken by the prophet Joel. It has come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Glory to God. Thank God that we're part of that. Thank God that we're part of the all flesh. Thank God that we have been brought into the family of God. And thank God that on the day of Pentecost that that was beginning to happen and the Holy Spirit of God fell in power upon the people. And the majority of those folks were there were people from Israel and Jewish people and they were spreading out throughout. But now God is showing Peter that, hey, you don't call common what I have cleaned. Don't call this what I'm going to do. He tells him, just go ahead and do this. In the voice of uh, 11, Acts chapter number 10, verse number 15, and the voice spake unto him a second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Well, that's difficult. If you want to do a little more study here on the, in, in the evening time, or if you have some more time tomorrow, or would like to do that, you want to know what he's talking about, go to Leviticus chapter number 11. In the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, there's given dietary laws that this is the way you're supposed to eat and this is what you can and this is what you cannot eat. This is the way that it goes. But yet God is saying, hey, I'm using this to show you what I have cleansed. It's not common anymore. Those Gentiles, they can be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ just as well as you could be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then not only we see that, we also see the invitation of those Gentiles in chapter number four, uh, 10, 19 through 24. Uh, here no sooner does God give Peter the instruction, the doorbell rings with an invitation. I, I love it when God prepares you for something. 
But then there's times when God doesn't prepare you for something or he gets right in the middle of it and says, okay, it's time to go. Wow, you say, well, give me a little more time. Let me uh, have a little more space. No, when God says to move, it's time to move. God tells Peter, three men are here looking for you, and you need to go with them. You need to spend time with them. You need to do exactly what they're asking you to do, because I have sent them that invitation of those Gentiles. But then there's an interview with, the, with Peter and with Cornelius in verses 25 through 33. You look through those verses, Peter obeys the command of God, and he meets with Cornelius. And then Peter asks Cornelius, well, why have you called me? What do you need me for? To be honest with you, to be, to be real honest, Peter's already, God's already been working because he's actually with a, living with and, and in the house of a tanner already, which that wasn't supposed to be anyway. So Peter is already kind of going that direction, but then God says, I, I'm going to let you go a little further. I want you to go a little further. And, and he begins to have this time. Why is it that you've called me? And he simply answers him, because I, as Miss Cindy sang, I need me and my family saved. Glory to God. May more of us make sure that we, we want to get our family saved. But, boy, they thought it so important. They wanted so much that their family and their friends and those people that were part of their life, he just wanted them to come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Boy, if we would get that kind of, uh, that kind of way that we are just desiring so much to be able to see our mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and, and children and grandchildren and all of those people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful way that we could be able to go forward and say, just Lord, just save my family. To be honest with you, I've been spending time in prayer with God a little more about some people that I really want to see saved. And I'll be honest with you, I'm claiming and hoping and praying that God will move in 2023, that I will see those people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And you know what? I believe that with all my heart, that if I pray in earnest and do my job and bring them to Jesus Christ, they can't help get but saved. That ain't proper English, but it's good preaching, praise God, as pastor said. Thankful that we have that. Thankful that we do that. Then the invocation of Peter. Boy, he just starts to preach. He rears back and he begins to declare the gospel. So sweet, so simple, but so plain. What is he preaching? He begins to preach that if you need peace with God and if you need to have and you all need to have peace with God, the only way that you can have peace with God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'm so glad that when I was a six-year-old little boy that a man roared back on a Friday night at Friendship Baptist Church and prayed and preached to me that if I needed and could have peace with God, that it could only come through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that one day when you were a, a, a lost a one that needed Jesus Christ as their Savior, there was a preacher that came along or there was a Sunday school teacher that came along or there was somebody that came along and said if you can have peace with God or the only way you can have peace with God is through the Lord Jesus Christ that's a simple thing that Peter was saying but he's also saying that the power of God is in Christ thank God the power of salvation is in Jesus Christ that if we're not looking for anything else, not looking for any other power, not looking for any other way, that it is the Lord Jesus Christ that provides the power of salvation to each and every one of us. But then all of us are all sinners, and all of us have a sin dead, and he preached this, that the price before God was paid by Christ. You say, Brother Shane, this is a Wednesday night. We know all of these things, absolutely. But we need to be reminded. Boy, that the price that Jesus Christ paid for us is what we deserved, what we, we should have been hanging on a cross. We should have been the one that had been at that whipping post. We should have been the one that had died and paid that penalty. But thank God Jesus Christ stepped out on the portals of time and, and paid that sin debt for each and every one. Thank God that we have that opportunity to have salvation through Jesus Christ. And then he also preached the pardon of God is through Christ. The pardon that we have is only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. The sacrifice that Jesus Christ was able to give. But then the last part of it, the last little section of it, when you look through the verses 44 through 48, you see an invasion of the Holy Spirit of God. I know it's Wednesday night and we're supposed to, you know, be bored and all that sort of stuff. But it, it doesn't bore me when I start thinking about the Holy Spirit of God. 
doesn't bore me. It doesn't, I don't think, uh, oh, humdrum what is going on when the Holy Spirit of God comes and in power begins to indwell these people. God showed up when the people of those people that, that heard the preached word of God, he showed up and showed out and made much of himself in that place. And what a wonderful thing to know that still today, the same God, this is what excites me, God. <laughs> The same God that was there in that household of Cornelius when Peter was preaching under the power of the Holy Spirit of God is the same God and the same power that we have here at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle on January the 11th, 2023, that we can still praise Him, that we can still go forward with Him. We can make sure that know that He is still on the throne, that He's still taking care of each and every one of us. That same God, that same power, that same salvation is right here, here tonight in the house of God when we think of that we begin to look through a few things that we begin to look through those six parts that we have by way of introduction but I begin to see something when I begin to really study into these verses look with me at chapter number 10 at verse number 4 and when he looked on him this is Cornelius speaking of Cornelius and he's looking at a, a, an angel of the Lord that came forth and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him, look at this, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Wow! God revealed himself to Cornelius to make him ready to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Brother James, to be honest with you, when I was a six-year-old little boy, I didn't go to hear the preaching of the gospel, but I was being prepared all along. You say, what was it that prepared you, Brother Shane, to be able to hear the gospel? Well, my mom and dad had already told me all about Jesus Christ. And they had given me some little cassette tapes. And y'all don't even know what cassette tapes are anymore. But they'd give me little cassette tapes. And they had little books. And, and I was able to listen to those tapes. And I would read along with those books. And I heard stories about Noah getting in an ark and, and spending time 40 days and 40 nights of, uh, of rain there. And I heard that, that God was just a picture of that door and how he uh, brought Noah in. And thank God, God shut the door and Noah couldn't get out. As long as Noah was in there and God had sealed it up, he wouldn't be able to get out even if he wanted to. Hallelujah. You, do, you say, you got all that from a cassette tape and a little book? Well, my theology has added a few things to it, but praise God. I heard stories about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they spent a little time and they said, Nebuchadnezzar, I don't care what you say. I don't care what's going on and, and what you say. I am going to listen to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to listen to God, and I'm going to obey what God wants me to do. And, and it, it, he, he may be with us, but he may not show up. But either way... We'll go to that furnace if we have to. And guess what? They went to the furnace, but so did God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I learned that Daniel went down to a lion's den, but he wasn't alone either, Brother James. God went down there with him. And I learned all about how Jesus Christ was the one that was lifted up on a cross and that died on a cross for me that I could have eternal life and rose on the third day. And, and I learned all of these things that my heart was being prepared all along and all along. And God was working with Cornelius. God was moving in Cornelius for a readiness that was about to take place. But all the good works and all the good deeds and all the moral living and all the giving that you could do would never get you into the house of God uh, the way you would be saved. But thank God, the prognosis is this. You need somebody to preach to you. <laughs> oh, Colin, so much. Somebody help me tonight. Please help me tonight. You needed somebody to preach the word of God to you. And God sent somebody to preach the word of God to you. You needed to hear the gospel that night that you got saved. Boy, it may have been on a Monday. It may have been on a Friday. It may have been on a Sunday morning. Be honest with you, Brother Earl, I get real nervous. Did y'all ever sing that song? It was on a Monday. Somebody touched me. And everybody stand up. Y'all spend that time. I always got real nervous because we'd always start on Monday. I don't know why we started on Monday. But we all started on Monday, and a couple people would stand up over here, and we get to Tuesday, and a couple people stand up, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and, and Friday, and Saturday. And I'm looking out there, because I used to play the bass guitar over at the church that my dad would lead to singing over there, and we'd be singing that song on a Sunday night, and people would be popping up, and, and Saturday night, and I'd, I'd stand up on Friday night, because God had saved my soul on that night. And I'd be looking out, I'd say, there's a whole bunch of unsaved people here at this church. Then we got to Sunday. Hallelujah. And I'll be honest with you. Some people stood up even when they weren't saved on Sunday because everybody else got up. 
At least that's my prognosis. But somebody needed to preach. Somebody needed to give the gospel message to you that night. And somebody went along. And, and that readiness was in your heart. You knew what was going on when you heard that gospel. You knew that you needed a Savior. You knew that something needed to happen in your life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a wonderful verse in Romans chapter number 10, verse number 13. But verse number 14 goes on, and it says, How then shall they call on him who they've not believed? How shall they believe on him who they've not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Thank God for an old-fashioned preacher that got up with leather lungs and thundered from behind a pulpit and told you that if you didn't get saved, you were going to hell. Thank God for one of those preachers that got back behind the pulpit and said that the only way to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for that pastor, that preacher, that would set forth and say that you need the Lord Jesus Christ. If not, you will die and go to a hell forever. Thank God for those preachers that go through. And thank God for the readiness that the Holy Spirit of God was working with those people. Boy, Cornelius was being worked on. But Peter had to be worked on. That proclamation in chapter number 10, verse number 6, look with me. He lodgeth with one Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee, I love this, I underlined it in my Bible. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, Lord. I don't know how to be able to do this. I'll be honest with you. I've, I've been able to lead folks to the Lord, and I've been leading people to the Lord, and, and I look at them and just say, all you have to do is trust Christ as your Savior. Just beg God to forgive you of your sin. Ask Him to come into your heart and thank God. And then a lot of people say, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to pray. Thank God you don't, know, you don't have to know how to pray. Thank God that there was somebody that told him, this is what thou oughtest to do. Thank God that Peter stood up and God didn't leave this man and his family hanging over the eternal flames of hell, but he provided a way. Thank God, hallelujah, that he provided a man that would preach the word of God and the Holy Spirit of God that had already gone before him and had the readiness of the Cornelius' heart. Boy, the message was sent to a rooftop, praise God. It was opening the heart and the minds and life of Peter. Not only do we see a readiness in Cornelius, but we see a recognition with Peter. Look with me. I told you I was going to skip around. Look with me in chapter number 10 in the book of Acts. Verse number 20. Arise, therefore, God talking to Peter, and get thee down. Go with them. Look at that next phrase. Doubting nothing. Nothing. Doubting nothing. That word doubting actually means to be perplexed or to be at an absolute loss, not knowing what to do. Why? Because God says, for I. <laughs> hmm. See, I, I love to soul win. I love to have a chance. But I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, Brother Dave Max is one of those guys that, that taught me one of the greatest things ever. You can witness to somebody, but they can always walk around. So that's why when you get to QT, wait till somebody starts putting gas in their, pump, in their car and then start witnessing to them. Because once they start pumping that gas, they're not leaving until they got enough. Either they're going to have enough gas or they're going to have enough of Jesus, one or the other. I, I love the, that fact that, that we have that, that, that and, and, and Jesus was, God was rocking the world of Peter. It rocked by the, the revelation from God that he had been taught and trained a certain way all of his life. But God stepped in and rearranged his way of thinking, and Peter recognized it. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I've got to hurry because time is running short quickly tonight. But part of this is becoming a new creature part of this is becoming that new creature and, and it's all ordered by God it's all ordered by God for us to be able to recognize what God is doing in somebody's life and, and this is what it is, look in verse number 20 it says this, arise therefore go thee down and go with them doubting nothing 
I'm going to be honest with you, Brother Steve, sometimes I don't understand. I don't understand what God has in, in His way. Michael, I don't understand what God is doing sometimes. I don't understand why He has me go this way when I should have gone that way. But I'll be honest with you, Brother James, there's times in my life where it seems like that God has me go home a different route because God has something else for me to do. Hey, I may not like it when Sister Heather says, Hey, I need you to stop by Walmart. Now I'm putting myself under conviction, Brother Lonnie. I may not like it when those things are sorted. And I don't understand what God has in it, but He's orchestrating. He's orchestrating everything the way it needs to be. You know, to be honest with you, why don't you ask Noah about building an ark? He probably didn't understand. Why don't you go ahead and you ask Joseph about sitting in a prison? I'm sure he didn't understand why that was. Why don't you ask Moses about standing before a burning bush? He didn't understand what was going on there. Why don't you go ahead and ask Hosea when he's standing at a slave block and saying, God, do you really want me to bring this woman back into my life? But God was orchestrating everything. Why don't you ask the three Hebrew children standing in the middle of a fiery furnace? Why don't you ask Daniel sitting there by the lion's den? Boy, here's the key, though. You say, how is it that this is a renovation? Really, truly, Brother Shane, how is it that you see it's a renovation? Look with me in verse number 17. Look with me in verse number 17 in chapter number 10. Chapter number 10, verse number 17. The Bible says this, Now while Peter, what's that next word? Doubted in himself what the vision which he was, had seen should mean. He was doubting. That word doubted in verse number 17 means to be perplexed, entirely at a loss. I do not understand. I don't, I don't know what is going on. God, you're going to have to show me. You're going to have to move something in my life. You're going to have to do something amazing to make me understand this. But in verse number 20, God is talking. and God is speaking to Peter. And he says, therefore, get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing. Now, in our English, we think, well, that doubt must be the same thing as the other doubt in verse number 17. No, sir. It's not the same thing. Verse number 17 says, perplexed, entirely at a loss, don't understand. Verse number 10, or verse number 20, actually, doubting means this, to oppose, to hesitate. God help me. You know what it really means? Discriminate. We're all God's children, those that are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what he's saying. That's what he's trying to rearrange. Peter's saying, hey, I only hang out with Jewish people because I'm of the Jewish blood. I only hang out with this type of people. I only do this kind of thing with these kind of people. I don't do this. And God says, doubting? Nothing. Discriminating against? Nothing. Having a judgmental attitude? Oh, I know. I know this is... Y'all think this is weird preaching. You ought to be up here and see the looks that are on y'all's faces right now. Wow. But that's what the word, that's where everything, as, as my dad used to say, where the rubber meets the road, this is where it is. Where did that renovation take place in Peter's life on top of that rooftop? Verse number 20. They don't look like me. God don't care. They don't act like me. God don't care. God says they need the same blood that you needed. Oh my. God help me. God says I have a plan. Follow the plan. Don't go anywhere else. Don't do, don't vary from the plan because I have ordered these steps. I have brought you together. Make sure that you don't worry about what I'm doing. You just do what I'm told I have told you to do. It's ordained of God as well. Verse number 20, it says this, For I have sent them. <laughs> Boy, the guarantee is that we need to recognize is it's of God. When God puts you in a place where and sets you in a spot where you're able to, to, to touch another person's life for the glory of God, that is ordained by the Lord Jesus Christ. God Almighty has set you up. But look at verse number 33 with me. We see a request. We're moving on. We're moving on. Everybody can pick their feet up off the floor. I'm not going to step on any more toes tonight. But look at the request. Immediately in verse number 33, immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, 
Thou hast done well that thou art come. Cornelius speaking to Peter. Now therefore we are all here in the present before, uh, here present before God to hear all the things that thou are commanded or that uh, are commanded of thee of God. When we first read this verse, and I'll be honest with you, when I first read this verse and got a hold of what this verse was saying, Brother Jose, I about came unglued. You say, why would verse number 33 uh, uh, make such a, uh, an impact on your life? Because they were beginning to look at, thank God, that they were looking for the presence of God. And they were looking for the word of God. And they were looking for a man of God to be able to preach. It hit me so much, it's so hard, that I wanted to run. As a matter of fact, I walked at a very brisk pace for about 15 paces, and then I gave out real quick. Because I can't run anymore, glory to God. I'll have designated runners, praise Jesus. But we have of this, the request that was made. Look, I just want you to preach the Word of God. I just want to hear what God has told you to tell us. Boy, look at the presence that they have. Now, therefore, in the middle of the way of verse number 33, now, therefore, are we all here present before God? Cornelius gathered his friends. Cornelius gathered his family. Cornelius brought all of these people together because he knew how important the message that Peter was going to give to them. It didn't matter what was going on in Cornelius' life. It didn't matter what was going on in Cornelius' family's life. It didn't matter what was going on in his friend's life. He gathered as many as would come, and he said, I need you to hear this message. Like she's saying, save my family, save my friends. That's what Cornelius wanted. The most important guest of any service that we have is the Holy Spirit of God, God Almighty, to be able to descend down on His people. The sweet Holy Spirit of God, the breath of God, to send a sweet breeze of glory through this sanctuary. That is the most important one to show up. You say, Brother Shane, we need certain people to show up or we won't be able to have church. I can tell you this. If God shows up and you show up and you want to have church, guess what's going to happen? Hallelujah. You say, Brother Shane, how do you know that's possible? Because I'll be honest with you. There's been times that I've been in this sanctuary all by myself with the lights off and what none of y'all here and what nobody else here, what nobody leading any songs, wasn't anybody getting the Bible and a text out, wasn't anybody doing anything like that. We didn't even take up an offering. But me and God had us a spell sitting right here at this whole altar being again to pray, being able to go up and down these aisles and start praying for people. Me and God had a time because it was me and God spending time and I didn't matter if God shows up it doesn't matter who else is there to be honest with you when you re when you realize that God is here you ain't gonna care who's next to you on your left or who on your right they ain't gonna care who's in front of you or who's behind you but as long as God shows up thank God that we can have a request that the presence of God to show up in this place I'm looking forward to the day that God absolutely just overwhelms this place and see his presence presence work in a great and mighty way around Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. Boy, we've seen it come close. Sunday was beautiful. Sunday was a wonderful time. But I can tell you, we can just snuggle up a little closer, Brother Jim. We can snuggle up a little closer to the Holy Spirit of God. And we can see something great and mighty happen in this very sanctuary. Glory to God. There's been times where that presence of God, but thank God for the preaching of the Word of God. Boy, at the end of it, it says to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Cornelius was prepared to hear the word of God. Now listen to me. He didn't say, now, Peter, this is what I came to hear. He didn't say this one. All right, I'm here. Bless me. Listen, I've been at work all day long. I'm real tired. And all these people are hungry. And if you hurry up, Peter. No. He just said, I've come to hear what God told you to say. 
Well, when we show up and we begin to hear the preaching of the Word of God, and we hear Brother Joe and he starts giving everything that he's been given all through the week, and as he spends hours and hours and hours as he studies the Word of God, boy, thank God that we have a pastor that preaches the Word of God. Thank God that we have a pastor that spends time in the Word of God. And boy, may we go forth and say, Amen, glory to God, and encourage the man of God as we come. Boy, he was just wanting to hear what Peter had to say from the Word of God. But lastly, lastly this, the remedy is this in verses number 43 and 44 at the end of the chapter. I'm, I'm getting there. I promise you I'm getting there. Look at verse number 43. To him give all, this is Peter, the very last verse of Peter's uh, 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 invocation that he was giving, the preaching that he was doing. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, speaking of Jesus, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. It don't get any simpler than that. It don't get any, any, any more plain than that. You know what I love, Brother Jose? This is great. This is great. This blessed me right here. Verse number 44, And they waited for someone to sing a stanza of Just As I Am. Nope. They waited for the pastor to pray and then let call on people to come down to the altar. Nope. While he was speaking, verse number 44, while Peter yet spake these words, look at this, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The precision of the word of God will do great and mighty things. What amazes me is, is it seems like we have a group of people in churches that are trying to figure out how they can gain more people to come and be a part of their church if they say the right words when all we need to do is preach this right here and when we preach this right here God is going to continue to do the rest we don't have to come up with any uh, gimmicks we don't have to come up in any other way we just preach the unadulterated word of God it's real simple that's the remedy that's the remedy of all of this the precision of the word of God in Isaiah, it says that uh, as my word go forth from my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Thank God, God gives the increase. But what is the remedy of the precision of the word? What is the remedy? The power of God. That word fail. Epipipto in the Greek. You've got to show your education off every once in a while. To embrace is what that word means. What's even better is it means to embrace with affection. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit of God didn't come down and say, You've been doing this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. You've done this all wrong. You've got it all messed up. No, the Holy Spirit of God came down and embraced them with affection and said, I love you. Glory to God. I want to run so bad right now, but I'd die. I promise you, I'd trip and fall, break my neck. I guarantee it. He embraced them with affection and said, I gave my life for you. I gave my all for you. I gave my son for you. I gave my beloved son that you might have eternal life. He embraced him with affection. You know what happened to me when I was a little boy? Thank God my dad was able to be there. And he was able to lead me right beside and pray right beside. But more importantly, Brother Jose, who showed up than my dad, my heavenly father. The Holy Spirit of God embraced me with affection and said, I love you. I care for you. This all happened, this is exactly what happened to me, that he embraced me, and he's been with me ever since. So I want to ask you a question. This amazing account in the Bible takes place in the Bible because one man met God on a rooftop. God rearranged his thinking and his way of thought, and he carried out God's plan, and look what happened. I want you to look in the pews next to you. Look what happened. Because God opened a door here in Acts chapter number 10 that's still open for each and every one of us today. 
Now I'm going to ask you this question. What is it that God needs to rearrange in your life? What is it that God really needs to do to break down a barrier? What in your life is that barrier that needs to be torn down that God is just needing to use? Well, there may be something here tonight. I just want to encourage you. Why don't you just let God have a, the rooftop renovation in your life? Like He did in Peter's life. Like He did in that life of that paralytic man. That those four friends saw God move in a great mighty thing. Boy, thank God. That we can meet God and He can meet with us. But let Him move things in our life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for what we felt tonight. God, I thank You for Your sweet embrace. God, I thank You for Your Holy Spirit. God, I thank You for the man of God that preached the Word of God to me one night. God, I thank You for those things that prepared my heart that I might be able to be ready to receive the Word of God. God, there may be things in my life right now, God, that need to be rearranged and brought to a whole new way of thinking. And God, Lord, may we just surrender our lives right here before you tonight. Say, God, whatever it is that you need to move in my life, rearrange in my life, break down a barrier in my life, God, it's yours. You take it. You do what you will. God, when we sing that song, I surrender all, may we really truly mean that we surrender all to you. Lord, I love you. I praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray all these things. Amen.